Stephon Diggs narcissistically got himself traded to the Houston Texans. And the thing about this, when you look at this trade, I don't think there's really a loser in this trade when you look at the full spectrum here. Stephon Diggs getting a one-year deal with the Texans, a huge money contract. CJ Stroud gets another weapon. The Buffalo Bills get to move on from Stephon Diggs retool rebuild going on looking at the buffalo bills looking at josh allen the thing about stefan diggs is he was trying to make calls with the coaching staff with josh allen and company in the meetings and they were like no get out of here you're not doing that then just a few weeks ago he removes all the buffalo bills wordage and logos from his social media handles we knew something was up we knew he was on the move. The Buffalo Bills had an aging wide receiver over 30 years old. Will be 31 years old in November. Has him on the books. They needed to move on. They needed to cut some bait. They needed to get more cap space. They made, they trade, and they moved Stefan Diggs to the Houston Texans. The Buffalo Bills won in this trade because they got the move on. They are looking at a studly draft class with a ton of wide receivers that can make an impact over the long term. Stefan Diggs has not had a 100 yard game for quite some time. We've ate Halloween candy, we've ate turkey on Thanksgiving, we've opened up our Christmas presents, we've got drunk on New Year's. And during that whole time, Stefan Diggs did not have a 100 yard game. It's been since week six against the Giants after that it slowed down dramatically he's had a few games of over 50 yards but the production was not there and if you asked anybody that had him in fantasy football they would tell you the same thing because weeks 10 through 18 he was dead he had a few games of some production wide receiver two production during that time it was volatile you did not count on it and most of the time he was in the red and then also looking in 2022, he had a batch of games in the back half of the season where he was in the red. That being said, we're 30 years old. How much more time does Stefan Diggs have? Maybe not that much more. He can still be productive. He can still help CJ Stroud. But Stefan Diggs last year had 160 targets and still ranked 13th among wide receivers in yardage. He had a ton of targets. He was top six in the league in targets, ranked 13th in yardage with one of the top quarterbacks in the game averaged 1.89 yards per route run his a dot slipped to 10.6 so we're seeing some of these numbers drop a little bit we're seeing the efficiency metrics drop as well but when he goes to the texans he gets his three-year deal restructured to a one-year deal so he's getting a signing bonus of 20.8 million a base salary of 1.21 million, off-season workout bonus of 250k, and his deal is voided. It's a one-year deal. So Buffalo paid him 20.9 million for zero years. Houston's paying 22.5 million for one year, and he is making out. He is raking bank, and he's going to hit free agency again and catch another bag as long as he doesn't fall on his face this season, which he's going to deliver some production. And then you look at the Houston Texans here. You got him, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. This offense is is on the come up even more he's a good piece to this offense you could say that all three of these wide receivers could hit but this offense took some slack with injuries last year from noah brown to tank dell to nico collins everybody's hurt they were taking their turns and stefan diggs is going to add some depth he's going to add a lot of quality depth he's going to add a starter he's going to give you some upside he's going to give you a top level wide receiver he still has that in him we just don't know how long and to what effect and how much that top end you're going to get. But Stefan Diggs adds another dog to a wide receiver room full of dogs here, led by CJ Stroud, who is killer on the deep ball attempts, 13th in the league, passing yards, he ranked 8th in air yards. 
Downfield, ranks 8th. Money ball throws, 5th in the league. So this guy gets it done. 8th in the league in pressure throws. He averages 9 air yards per attempt, 2nd in the league. Adjusted air yards per attempt, 8.1, which is 2nd in the league. Yards per attempt, 8.2, 3rd in the league. And he's going to be pushing it to Diggs, Nico Collins, and Tank Dell. If those guys are healthy, C.J. Stroud's hitting. C.J. Stroud going into his second season. Are we going to see a sophomore slump? Or are we going to see him just go bonkers this year? C.J. Stroud, one of the best quarterbacks in the league last year. Very accurate deep ball. And we're getting him more weapons. And we could get even more weapons in a draft. You never know what happens in the NFL draft, especially if the right wide receivers fall to you. But now you're looking at Josh Allen. What's going to happen with him? What are we doing with Josh Allen, who ranked fifth in the league in pass attempts, number one in deep ball attempts last year, interceptable passes, second in the league, so he is a little risky. Air yards, number one of all quarterbacks, passing yards, fourth in the league, averaged 8.7 air yards per attempt, 6.8 adjusted yards per attempt, 15th in the league. Tops in the league in most metrics, especially when it comes to pushing the ball downfield. He's very aggressive. You look at the wide receiver depth chart, you're like, man, Khalil Shakur, Curtis Samuel, Justin Shorter, Andy Isabella, a name from the past. You're getting scared here. You're like, Curtis Samuel's a bye, Khalil Shakur's a bye. But when you look at the NFL draft, this is the most stacked wide receiver class we've ever seen. Of course, the top guys are probably not going to fall to him unless they trade up. Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze. But what if we see a Brian Thomas Jr. with the Bills? What if they get an Xavier Worthy or an A.D. Mitchell? What if they double or triple up at the wide receiver spot? They get some hosses. Of course, on the start during the rookie season, they're not going to replace a Stephon Diggs. Even in the back of the season when he was on the downs, they're not going to replace a Stephon Diggs. Maybe a Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors right now. But the long-term upside is there. The long-term developmental upside, rebuilding this passing offense is there. They could pick up two or three good wide receivers on the cheap. They can get an upgrade over Gabe Davis pretty easy in this year's draft. Third round, fourth round, fifth round, you can catch an upgrade over Gabe Davis. It's not that hard to do in this year's draft. But overall, they got their Devo wide receiver off the team. They got some money off the books. They can retool. They can rebuild. They can dust off their hands. They can move forward. They can get a couple wide receivers in the draft of some quality. This is one of the best wide receiver classes of our lifetime. Pick two, three, four wide receivers, whatever you need to do to get it done. This is the draft to do so and get some more wide receivers next year even. Maybe somebody off waivers next year. But you got some talent looking you in the face in the draft in April. So the Buffalo Bills aren't 100% roasted here. Josh Allen's got something to look forward to here. It's called the NFL Draft. But everybody won in this case scenario. The biggest winner of this trade... Stefan Diggs. That's my two cents on the Stefan Diggs trade. I want to thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because I got more coming at you. I want to thank you for watching, though. I'll catch you on the next video.